Hello, and welcome to another Force 5 tutorial video. Today, we'll be talking about the simple view with the outline view type navigation. This is the default view when you install Force 5 now. However, if you find yourself in another view, you can get here by getting into Force 5, opening up the view menu, and selecting simple view, and for navigation type, selecting outline. We'll start with the view type. The view type describes the buttons along the side and what buttons you'll see. This top one on the left will start a new survey, give you the ability to start a new survey with templates, just like you were in the survey management window. The next button down will actually bring you to the survey management window. From here, you can open surveys, start new surveys, make templates. Go ahead and open up Kelly Bell again for this tutorial. The next button down opens up the photo management where you can add or manage photos, signatures, logos, or access the settings for the photos. The next one down is our printer screen. This replaces three or four buttons in the other view. From within the printing menu, you can choose to pick full report to print, condensed report, surveys notes, or survey outline, and all the options related to all of them independently. See our printing tutorial for more information on this screen. On the right hand side, we've got jump to next heading item and previous heading item. The blue arrows will jump to the next uncompleted item or the previous. Or jump to a blue flag. The red arrows will jump you to the next NAID section or previous N8 section. The green shields will jump you to the next section that has a finding associated with it or the previous section with a finding associated with it. The blue ones here will jump to the next section that has a bookmark in it or the previous section with a bookmark. For the moment, we're going to skip the search as that's going to be covered later in this video. The next icon down, the one that looks like a broom, will actually clear out all the text in your edit window. This will only clear out text and will not clear out findings and recommendations. The one just next to it, the blue curvy arrow, is an undo button in case you didn't mean to clear out that text. Below that, to the right, the icon with the ruler and the compass gives you the ability to rename subsections, categories, or even header names, or reorder them, or make them a table, hide them, make this one a table. Let's show the last button, which is to change the properties of a table. You have to be on the heading item that has the table to access it, otherwise it's going to be grayed out. But once you've made it a table item, you can then change how many columns and rows you have and access the drawing options from here as well. When you're on an item, you have some buttons on the center section of the program on the edit window. The one on the left will either add or remove a bookmark, depending on if there's already a bookmark there. You can NA an item. And there's a little arrow on this NA, which if you press that, is going to give you the option to NA the entire section, so you don't have to do it 
one at a time. This icon gives you the ability to add a photo to an item within the system section, like so. Once you're in the add photo portion of this, that icon will change this paper with a pen so you can switch back to your edit window. These icons will bring you to the next section with a photo in it, or the previous section with a photo in it, where you can then go in and change the photos as needed. On the bottom, you can add the text from your edit window as an item choice, or if you have one selected using the minus icon over here, remove it. You can also replace the entire edit window with an item choice with this button, or add the selected item choice to the end with the green plus button. Of course, we've got our add and manage findings and recommendations button with the light bulb. We also have go to next heading over here as well in previous heading. Now that we've discussed all the buttons in this view, let's go back and talk about the search function. In this view, the search window is built into the view. So you've got options for searching in headings, which are these outlined here. Uh, the edit window, which is of course what you type here, or mnemonic, which are these codes to the side of each heading item. You also, if we go, if we get rid of mnemonic and go back to heading search, you can then search for different types of heading text. So you can type in the whole word, the beginning of a word, or any part of the word, or even what's at the end of the word. This is all very important, and the most calls I get on search are related to type of match. It's common for people to have whole word only when they really intend to have any part of selected. You also have the ability to search in certain sections of your survey. I know what I'm looking for is only in the system section, so we'll just look there. For my example, I'll look for the anchor, so I'll have heading window selected, as well as any part of, and I'll do a search for ink. If I hit find, it'll bring us to the first section that has ink. Well, this isn't quite what I'm looking for, so I'll hit next over here, and that'll bring me to anchors. Now this magnifying glass over here I said we'd get back to, that actually just brings up the search window here. And then the magnifying glass with the arrow is the same as the next button. One final thing I'll cover before we end this video is in this view, one of my favorite features is when you're surveying and you've got a bunch of things open and expanded in the tree view. If you put your cursor up here and click the right mouse button, it collapses it all. And then you have your five main sections of a Force 5 report. If you're ever wondering what part of the survey you're in, it's always going to be listed up here. You're in the system section, cabin appointments, interior description, and cabin layout. If you click up here on the name of your survey, it'll tell you, of course, the name of your survey, what template you're using, and the completion percentage of that survey. If you click the yellow bar at the top, 
it'll return you back into your survey as you know it. And finally, this big green bar up here now, it's only green because we're at 99%, but it shows you what percentage of your survey is completed. So if I go back to find the next empty item and I NA it, you'll see it'll go from 99.86% all the way up to 100%. And with that, thank you so much for watching.